this is where I used to work, Cross Coast National Park, who abandoned me in my time of need of severe neurobrilliosis and several tick-borne diseases including babesiosis which required red blood cell exchanges, selling my house, going to America and Mexico in 2019 with a parasite load of uh, babesia in 11% of my red blood cells and red cell exchanges, autoimmune encephalitis, wheelchair bound, abandoned by New South Wales Health, abandoned by Queensland Health, abandoned by the Australian Government who have now brought out DISCAT guidelines debilitating symptoms attributed to ticks who refuse to accept world knowledge and doctors who are actually improving people's health and getting people better treatment plans that were working instead they bring out these fraudulent guidelines of DISCAT debilitating symptoms attributed to ticks which do nothing to help the patients that just deny care. I've been in about over 30 emergency departments in the last two and a half years, if not more. I was denied care on the basis of DISCAT. Even when I was going septic with three staph infections, they used the DISCAT guidelines against me. I have it written down from John Hunter Hospital. Here are the DISCAT guidelines. And I suggest, exclamation mark, you show these to your doctor. That was a reason to deny care for sepsis, as my body has a low CRP and no body temperature due to severe immune dysfunction and immune suppression, as well as the autoimmunity. I don't just have autoimmunity, I have immune, immune suppression. However, no doctors will take our referrals. I'm not alone in this. No one can get an infectious disease doctor to work with a neurologist. They all pretend that they will have a multidisciplinary team in the hospitals, but they do not. They refuse multidisciplinary care in Australia. This is what DISCAC guidelines has done to us. This was the best job in the world, so I thought. It has destroyed my family. It's left my daughter practically abandoned. My daughter contracted this disease in utero. And if you look up the CDC guidelines, they now admit that it in utero transmission. So women are, uh, who work in the bush can give this to their fetus, unborn child, and at that time was unknown to me. My daughter has come back to CDC positive many times. She was refused the Western blot at Westmead Hospital. She was told she had just asthma. We had to take her to America in 2011 as well, where she was also diagnosed. She's also come back to Borrelia miyamioti, which is a relapsing fever strain, which myself and her have. We have more than one strain of Borrelia. And that is also denied care in Australia, which is just as bad as Lyme disease. Neuroborreliosis is more than one strain of Borrelia. Yet the Australian government used Lyme semantics to deny us care. It's criminal, it's unjust, and I hope to see change in the future. Because this has destroyed my life, my body, I now have severe spinal damage. I have to hold onto the sign, I can barely stand up. My neck has myelopathy in it, and I still have autoimmune markers attacking my central nervous system, which are now, we had to send, my solicitor had to send me to a medico legal independent assessor to get an independent assessment where they look at all the literature and the test results. Because the hospitals all work to cover this up and protect it and they refuse to look at the evidence. Okay, can I ask you uh, some questions, uh, Natalie Young? Uh, when did you uh, first sick? I was first sick in 2002. I got bitten by 100 ticks. Fevers, body aches, chills, a lot of kidney pain. Uh, however, I came I, I came good after a few months, I thought, but then I kept getting migratory joint pain, um, fatigue, body aches, um, which had worsened every three to four weeks. Uh, it was cyclic. But the last bite in 2009 was the one that I could never work again, and it hit my central nervous system. And looking back now, as my American expert doctors said, that they missed the autoimmune compartment and you have to treat the autoimmune and the infectious at the same time. That did not happen with me. 
due to the denial of the tick-borne disease in Australia. So that went on for over nine years and my central nervous system has been under attack for that long with no um, at plasmapheresis, IVIG, while, while being in a hospital, being looked after. Sadly, I just kept deteriorating, deteriorating until I had to sell my house in 2019. Before that, in 2018, I also went to New York to a neurologist and that was uh, some of my um, money from the work cover lump sum that I used to get to there. And I sent, they sent my blood all around New York to labs where the military get their bloods tested and that's where the babesiosis came back still positive, Bartonella and the Borrelia. And co-infections by that time had taken over my body of mycoplasma, chlamydia pneumonia, chronic disease. All in Australia, they refused to treat any of these. In the hospitals, they just denied care. We had some general practitioners trying to help us. However, after I deregistered all of them, so now we have no one left to help us at all. And all my referrals for the last three and a half years for infectious disease have been ignored. So next question, what was your symptoms? My symptoms were many. By two, 20, 20, two, 2009, severe neurological symptoms. Um, couldn't, couldn't talk properly at times severe head pain, sweats, fevers, chills, body aches, vomiting. I vomited for a year straight when they put me, then they put me on antibiotics and it just, it just got so, so bad. I needed an IV antibiotics, so that was delayed. Then I finally got put on them because I lost the use of my arms. It hit the top of my spine, which is known as Bamworth syndrome. Uh, and an uh, immunologist um, diagnosed me with meningio neuritis at that time. I went to a neurologist who had said I had severe denervation off my nerve roots on my top of my spine. However, he didn't know what the constellation of symptoms were of my spine. At that time, my central nervous system was under attack according to the doctors in America as well. So all that care was delayed for a long, long time. Okay. How long your medical care delayed? In Australia, the, the correct medical care was delayed over nine years. Over nine years.